Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So today what we're doing is um, we are going to explore cutting precision tapers on the lathe. Um, and when I say tapers, what I mean is um, short tapers, um, not long tapers. Uh, these would be the types of tapers that you see uh, for mounting chucks or morse tapers or uh, uh, relatively short, uh, short tapers. Um, now there's some problems with uh, setting these up and cutting them is that they have to be very precise um, to you know meet book specifications. Um, it doesn't take much uh, uh, to be off in angle or in diameter and it, it drastically affects how a, uh, uh, the mating part fits. So um, that's why this is of interest to the metalworking community is uh, um, it's not simple and uh, there's been books written on this and uh, there's whole um, tolerance systems uh, to, uh, to quantify uh, the different grades uh, of tapers and mating fits. Um, so uh, many of us have wanted to cut a Morris taper or a Jacobs taper, uh, something like that, uh, to make our own tools or tool shanks or, or uh, to repair. Uh, damaged uh, equipment, which is the case what we're doing here is uh, uh, we're repairing this, uh, this drill press shaft and we did some weld build up on here and uh, what we want to do is we want to turn um, an accurate uh, 33 Jacobs taper on this, okay? Now, I didn't have a, I didn't have a, uh, a commercial arbor with a uh, 33 Jacobs taper around here, so I, I went ahead and bought one here and you know they're relatively cheap. They're you know they're ten bucks or whatever. Um, so this has a uh, has the correct taper on it from a, some outside manufacturer. Um, actually, I don't know who made this one. I think this one was made in France. Uh, so it's not a Jacobs brand. Uh, not that that makes any difference. So this was produced to some uh, angle tolerance, an AT tolerance. Um, so anyway. Uh, so that's the trick: is how do we how do we set these angles, and how do we measure these and control these while we're making them? So that's what we're going to explore. Um, it's a big subject, and um, there's uh, um, it's pretty interesting actually. So uh, I, uh, doing a little bit of research here, uh, I bumped into some stuff that I didn't know about, and uh, which was it was always cool for me to to find out new stuff. And um, uh, so there's a lot of information on the web and. Uh, available in books and machinery handbook, things like that. So anyway, we're going to zoom in on this and get a little closer. I made a little gauge here and I'm going to explain how this little gauge works. And, uh, and this is a very simple gauge, so there's no magic in making this in particular, okay? Um, so we'll zoom in a little bit and uh, suit up and we'll take a look at that. And, and then uh, eventually we'll get to cutting that. <laughs> All right, let's go. Okay, so Here's a here's this commercial arbor, okay, and this is this is the taper that we want to cut on this damaged shaft here, okay, and ultimately that's what it well <laughs> it'll look something like that when we're done with it, um, and so here's here's our problem with this setup here is we have a damaged chuck and we have a damaged shaft, so we have no we have no reference, okay. This was all chowdered up, and then this isn't exactly looking very good inside either, okay? So normally this would go together like this, and I can just tell by putting that in there that that doesn't feel right going in there. Um, so we, we, we have no standard. Let's just pretend we don't have this for a second. So what we want to do is, you know, there's specifications for these tapers here, okay? And this is, this is from Jacob here. And this is the one we're doing right here, this 33, and I don't know how well you can see it. But it gives us, it gives us some diameters, okay, and, um, and some lengths, okay. So from that, um, and it also gives us a taper in there somewhere, doesn't it? Taper on diameter. Um, between, okay. Usually these are a taper per foot, but anyway, it gives us a taper. But from those, we can extrapolate the angle that we want, okay, which is what we care about in this case here. So 
there's an angle with the center line and and we would set our compound rest to to cut that uh, um, that particular angle so now the problem comes is that's fine you know we can set the angle pretty precisely that's that's pretty easy relatively easy okay but now the trick here is getting the diameters correct now this diameter is not too bad here because basically it comes we're, we're lucky that this happens to be the same diameter as the upper diameter of the of the taper but if if you don't have your angle right you, you need two points you need two points and um, so really a taper is typically defined as the diameter between two parallel planes okay and um, so and that is a good way to measure a taper and qualify a taper okay so uh, we're going to use instead of uh, um, so we're we're going to create two planes here uh, that uh, are a measured distance apart so from that we can extrapolate uh, the angle and we can also extrapolate the the diameters at any point that we care to in, uh, care to look at okay now this gauge here I just made this up off camera. There's nothing fancy here. It's got two diameters. It's got a large diameter and it's got a small diameter. And I just I just bored them and I, I said, okay, I want to be about here and I want to be about here. So I bored them and you know, if you're a thousandths over or a thousandths under, it doesn't really matter. The kicker is you need to know the diameter. And that's pretty easy for us to do. We've got some plug gauges here. We can stick those in. And so now we have we have known diameters, okay? And you can see that, that those fit real nice. Okay, you have the, the piston fit there, okay? Um, so as long as we know those diameters, okay, and we know the length of this, and these are parallel, which they are, which it is, okay? Now we can use this gauge here, and this is we, traditionally called the two ring method, okay? Um, we can slide this on and it intersects that taper so that's the big end it intersects that taper in a particular place and we can take a measurement from this face to the end okay and then we can put the small end on okay and we can measure from that face to the end again and we can extrapolate a distance between those two points okay so I just got this. This is basically for demonstration purposes, right? Since I didn't have one, I would have to start working this. And I think it's a little easier to explain on something that already has that diameter. So that's kind of why I did that. All right, but we don't need this. We can just set that aside. And, and if we have this and we have this and we have our, our specs, okay, uh, we're off and running. Okay, so this was just downloaded off of the internet and uh, uh, it's in Machinery's Handbook, it's in a million places, okay. And um, uh, so we're gonna go set the machine up and show some meth, uh, this isn't the only method that we're gonna show uh, on how to measure these. Um, we're gonna show a couple different ways of measuring um, uh, this particular angle. So that, that, that's another reason why I got this was I wanted to show a couple ways of measuring that uh, and let you guys kind of uh, see the differences there. Okay, so uh, let's go go uh, chuck this guy up and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do some uh, inspect or we'll do some setup and some inspection on that. Okay, so here we have a this is a uh, an arbor for a drill chuck and uh, this is a number four Morse taper to a number four Jacobs taper so this is the Jacobs taper section and this is the Morse taper section so one of the, the the difficulties with with making these here is you got a couple of ingredients that kind of have to come together at one time right so you have to have a very accurate angle okay and the other thing you have to have is um, you're trying to hit a diameter here and a diameter there and an angle. Well, when you have the right diameter here and you have the right diameter there over the correct distance, then the angle comes out automatically, okay? So, but controlling all of those things um, can be a little bit tricky. My little bird friend is back here, so uh, <laughs> bear with me here. Uh, yeah. Uh, you little bugger. Okay. Anyway, uh, so 
you know, when we're machining this here, it's very difficult, you know, you can't just measure it with a two-point measuring system, like a micrometer, right? So how do you how do you measure that corner? You see there's a big chamfer on there. What the specification calls that is that theoretical sharp corner there, uh, where a plane intersects that taper, okay, and then another plane intersects this taper here, and it calls out um, uh, those diameters, okay? So how the heck do we check that, okay? Um, and how do we check this angle? So all it all it has it all has to come together at once. Okay, so there's a few ways you can do it. All right, and uh, the J Joe average guy in the shop has at his disposal some pretty pretty powerful techniques to do this. Okay, with relatively simple tooling. Um, and uh, all right, hold on a second here. Okay, so I'm back. I had to shoo that bird out of here. <laughs> So, the, if, if we can measure a diameter here and then move a known distance and measure a diameter here, okay, then we can calculate that angle, okay? And then from those measurements of a known diameter here uh, and a known diameter here at a known distance, we can extrapolate, because uh, we have a reference surface here, what, what the diameter is at that corner, okay? So that's what we're going to show here. So we're going to show a couple different ways that you can measure diameters at particular distances. Okay, that's what we're showing here. And then uh, we'll set the machine up for, uh, it's not this particular angle, the one we're doing is a little different. Um, but we'll show uh, setting the machine up and then cutting that taper and measuring it. Okay, so uh, well, let's go over to the lathe and, uh, and go look at some setups. Okay, so what we did was uh, we put a soft center in here, and then I just took a few thousandths off of it um, to true it. And so that's what the function of this is: is um, um, it's a you know it's a sacrificial center that you you turn whenever you need a real dead nuts uh, concentric point. And so what we're going to do, so what that means is I I took a few thousandths off until it cleaned up. Um, but that's on that's dead nuts on the uh, the center of rotation of the uh, of the spindle. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our commercial arbor between centers here, and then we're going to show how to measure uh, that angle real accurately. So let's get this guy up here. We got our oop, back that up a little. All right, uh, make sure I don't want to jab it there. Okay, my bottoming. Let me see. I'm bearing. I might file that tip off a little bit. Um, of course, I don't have a file real handy. I'm just going to take this sharp tip off because uh, I want to make sure that it's not it's not hitting the bottom of the hole or the bottom of the center hole in the arbor there. Okay. So let's put that in, and we'll. Put this between centers lightly, and uh, basically I want it between centers, not super tight. I still want to be able to turn it by hand, okay, which I can. Now we'll get our our little indicator on it here. Oops, what's going on there? There we go. Like so. That kind of close. So, oops, let me flatten that out a little. So the idea here is we're going to measure the to to determine this angle. We're going to measure the difference between two points. So we're going to measure. We'll zero the indicator here, and then we'll move a prescribed distance or a known distance, I should say, and then measure the difference here. And um, um, that difference, the difference in uh, measurements over that distance, we can translate that into an angle quite easily. Oh wow, somebody get, somebody got lucky there. Yeah, zero that up. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm coming across the center to find the this or across the the diameter to find the high spot, like so, and carefully zero the indicator. That looks pretty good. 
And you get, these measurements have to be pretty accurate because we're not moving very far. Okay, so now what you can do is I'm going to zero the DRO, but you could put an indicator against the carriage and measure your travel with a, with a dial indicator as well, too. So you got to take good measurements here to do a good job. So let's move our distance. Let's see, I'm zeroed up, I'm zeroed up. Okay, so we're going to move. And we're going to move some. The farther, the better, actually. Oops, a little too far. A nice even number. So that's 800 thousandths that I've moved. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back across the center here. Okay, and that's the high spot. And I should have given it a spin down below, but I'll give it a spin here. And I'm not seeing any run out, any significant run out. And uh, so let's see how far we move. 10, 20, 25, 26, 26 and a half thousandths. All right, so if we do a little math, we can determine that angle um, pretty, pretty accurately. Um, so let's go do that, um, see what it is. Okay, so I got a little chicken sketch here of what we just did. <clears throat> so we zeroed the indicator near the small end of the of the uh, commercial mandrel. Okay, then we we moved over uh, eight hundred thousandths, and we read what this difference was, which was point zero two six five. Okay, and then this distance here to here was eight hundred thousandths. So from that, we can calculate uh, an angle, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So um, this is going to be 0 0.0265 over 0 0.800. And then that, the tangent raised to the power of negative 1 should give us the angle, okay? Let's uh, go ahead and do that. 0 0.0265, enter, 0.8. Divide negative one, so that gives us an angle of 1.8972 degrees. Okay, so that doesn't. Okay, let's see what the spec is. Um, the spec is um, 1.8184, okay, let's do that, 1.8184 degrees, all right, let's do a little subtraction there, 1.8184 minus, so that's a delta of 0 0.0788 degrees, okay, now what is that in uh, degrees, minutes, and seconds? Um, so, 4 minutes and 44 seconds, 4 minutes and 44 seconds of angle. Alright, well that doesn't sound too close. Now, the best I can find um, tolerance wise on um, this little mandrel, or this little uh, commercial uh, um, Arbor, I should say, is uh, some information from Bison, and they say they manufacture these drill chuck arbors to what's called an AT4 specification. Okay, that's AT4. Okay, all right, and what that is is that's part of um, um, what is it? ISO 1947. Okay, I think is what it is. And um, this is a, uh, oh, do I have it here? No, I don't think I have it here. Um, this is part of a uh, cone angle tolerance system, okay? And, uh, and I do have the, the printouts for what those, what those tolerances are here. Let's see if I can show this without glaring out the camera here. All right, so, and I've marked, so this is the, uh, uh, range of cone length here. Oh, okay. So we're we're around an inch. Okay, I'm actually I'm off by one line here. Um, so we're about an inch, 25 millimeter length. Okay, and the AT4 specification says 
that that angle should be within 21 seconds, okay, to be manufactured to that technique, or excuse me, that specification. Um, the, so eight, there's AT4, AT5, AT6. The lower the number, the more precise the, uh, the angle. So here's AT1 for the same thing, and we're only allowed five seconds of deviation, okay, uh, into the angle, all right? Um, so, what, and what were we? We were four minutes uh, and 44 seconds. So, now this particular method that we use with the indicator is not the best method. We're going to show a better way to do that. So, um, let's go do that. <laughs> okay, so we've got our, our commercial arbor chucked up in the uh, in this little four jaw, and we indicated this for run out. So we're 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 spot on there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use our, uh, our little ring gauge that we made here. Um, and this has, and I showed you this before, it has our known diameters in it that we've, we've pinned. Um, okay, so we got a small end, and then we have a, a large end here, okay. Um, so what we're going to do with that is now we're actually going to determine what the diameter is at a particular point. And the way we do that is we can just slip this on and then it intersects that, that angle and it starts to bite. Now, we have, since this isn't hardened, this is hard bronze, as I mentioned before, um, but it's not hardened. So we need to be a little bit careful with it. If we wanted to make a durable one, we'd heat treat it and grind those faces real parallel and all that. But uh, um, if you had to do a lot of this in this particular size range. So what we're going to do is just kind of gently put it on and just wiggle it on until there's no play and that we're fairly confident that it's, uh, that it's seated, the ring is seated on the taper. Okay, now we're going to come up here and double check by, since we know those faces are parallel, we're just going to indicate those faces get my handy dandy little hammer here because I don't expect it to be perfect okay so that's a that's a high so basically I'm just truing that face okay that looks pretty good there oh uh, you know what darn it um, Sorry about that. I'm going to back up a little bit so you guys can see that indicator, uh, hopefully. And, you know, once again, it's the damn glare thing, okay? All right, so now what we do is we have a, we have a, um, that face is perpendicular now. So what we can do is we can measure from the end of that, Okay, I'm going to touch off on the end of that commercial mandrel, all right, and zero the DRO, and then we're going to come out here, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to go to zero again. All right, this is just a simple way to take this measurement. You could, you could take this measurement with a depth micrometer as well, okay? So I'm zero, zero. My DRO is reading 0.269, okay? So 0.269. Nine. Okay. Um, all right. So we got one measurement. All right. And we'll just spin this again to verify. Yeah, we're good. Okay. So that's our our uh, our distance in. Now we're gonna gonna pop our little gauge off. All right. And then we're gonna put our small end on. Same thing. We're just gonna wiggle it on. Till it seats, okay, and we'll come up, and then we're going to give it an indicate. You know, and as you can see, this is a typical tedious process for this kind of stuff. But you know, once you get going on it, it uh, it doesn't. You know, these things don't take but a couple of minutes, right? All right, it's just moving a 
All right, that's pretty good. And then I'll see if I can spin that. You guys can see. Okay, so now since my my indicator was already uh, was already zeroed, I can just take a measurement directly now. All right, and nine six one four is what I get. All right, so now I got two two numbers. Point nine six one four. All right, so let's go do a little bit of math and uh, see if we can sort that out. Okay, so I've kind of preset up the sketch here. Um, this is our ring gauge up here, okay? And um, we have our known diameters. The small end is 0.565, and that's, we're gonna call that D2. And then our large end here, um, or larger end, I should say, is 0.609, we call that D1. And then we know the length by measuring, uh, you know, just by simple measuring, okay? And these two faces are parallel, okay? So now here's, here's what we did. Now what I've done is I've, I've only shown half of the ring gauge here. So this will be our, our short dimension with our, um, this will be D2, and then this one will be our D1, okay? So we measured some distances over on the lathe, okay? And what we were doing is measuring from this surface here to this surface here, okay? And this is where, uh, you know, you need a sketch, okay? It's, it's kind of hard to keep all this stuff straight in your head, okay? So we measured that distance and uh, it was uh, 0.9614 by the DRO, okay? Um, and then we measured this distance here, the small one here, okay? We measured that small one and I got my notes over here. It's a 0 0.269, 0 0.269 nine by the DRO okay okay so now we got a bunch of known stuff now so what we really care about is what what we care about is the distance from here to here where those two touched okay this is what we want to figure out okay and since we were measuring with different it's it's kind of hard for me to draw sideways like this so bear with me guys um, so if we take this number and subtract that number, we, we get that number, right? Would you guys agree with that? Okay, I hope you do. All right, so let's just do that. And uh, 0.9614, enter, 0.269 minus, okay, 0.6924, okay? All right, so now we, we've, got, uh, we've got some good information here now. So let's check the angle first, okay? And what we're gonna do there is we're gonna take um, uh, D1, which is 0 0.609, and we're going to subtract D2, okay? Which is 0.565, okay? And then we're gonna divide that by two since that's a diameter, okay? So let's just do that, 0 0.609, enter, 0.565 minus 2 divide, okay, that equals 0 0.022, okay? Okay, so now if we take, so now we got a little triangle that we can work with here, guys, okay? So here's here's our triangle, all right? And this leg of it is 0 0.022, okay? And this leg is 0 0.6 nine two four and we want to solve for this angle here theta all right so theta is equal to point zero two two over point six nine two four and it's the tangent raised to the power of negative one gives us the angle okay so let's just do that point zero two two enter point six nine two four divide inverse all right, so theta equals 1.8199 degrees, all right? So that's this, that's the angle, oops, on pen. That's the angle from the center line to there, okay? All right, now according to our uh, specifications for that angle, let's see if I can reach those, nope. So our specifications for that angle here, this is 33, this is what we're looking for for the angle from the center. So we're actually 
pretty stinking close. Now you can see that this method is a lot better than the indicator method, okay? Because we have full bearing, we have full bearing in the uh, on the uh, on the taper all the way around, okay? Run out doesn't really play a part in it, okay? So any 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 mispositioning of the uh, of the arbor in the in the machine really doesn't play a part in it, okay? Um, so we kind of take that out of the equation a little bit too. So we can see that we're actually very very close to the uh, the correct angle. So let's just let's just see what we got here, um, and we'll take. Uh, uh, we'll take the angle, so enter 1.8184 minus, okay, so that's uh, one and a half thousandths of a degree, okay. Now, what that translates into is about, wow, that's pretty close, a half a second, is that right? A half a second of angle, that's pretty stinking close. Um, so. You know, and if I was really, really fussy about this, I would probably take those measurements twice and kind of average the results, uh, do it a couple times to make sure that I, I was getting what I, what I thought I was getting, okay? So now you can see here, too, that, that we can work backwards now, and we can solve for this little triangle right here, right? And that this is corner, and now we can extrapolate and we can get a diameter to that intersection, okay? So, um, let me uh, change the camera around and uh, get a fresh piece of paper, and then we'll work out uh, we'll work out what that diameter is at that intersection. Okay, so here's a my new sketch here, and uh, just as a reminder, we're we're trying to solve for this diameter here. Okay, so this is our ring gauge that we use to measure, and we know how far we shoved it on. Okay, so the first thing is we. We're solving for a little triangle here like this. Oops. A little triangle, Tom. Okay. All right. And um, so the first thing is we'll take this number and subtract that number from it, which gives us this number, which is one leg of our triangle. Okay. So 1.008 and uh, 0.964 minus. Okay. So that is 0466, okay? Now we remember that our angle, um, we calculated our angle and it was 1.8199 degrees, okay? So now what we wanna do is we wanna solve for, for that little leg, okay? And then once we solve for that little leg, we double that and we subtract it from that number and uh, we, have a, we have a diameter. So let's go ahead and do that, all right. So what we want to do first is take the tangent of that, 1.8199 tangent, okay, and we're going to multiply it by that number, 0 0.0466 times, all right, and we get 0 0.0015 inches, okay. All right, so we multiply that by 2, okay, and that's 0 0.003 and then we subtract that from that number, 0.565, okay, 0 0.003 minus, so this diameter is 0.562, okay? So we indirectly determine what that diameter is, okay? So now let's look, let's look at our, uh, our little chart here, and this is our 33 Jacobs taper. So the large end, 624, small n, 5605, okay, so that's the number we're looking at here. All right, so we're pretty close to that, 562, all right. So, there was, you know, there's a little difference in the angle, you know, so there's some tolerances here, okay, so what are the tolerances? And, uh, well, it depends on how that commercial arbor was manufactured to what tolerances. So I can't find anything online as to, excuse me, how, what uh, Jacobs makes those tolerances to. And this is that uh, um, AT tolerance grade that, uh, that I mentioned earlier, okay? So anyway, that's how we get back to that. So now if we start, we're gonna go through this again because we're gonna cut that taper on that drill press shaft, okay? And we're gonna, we're going to, um, 
get it cleaned up. We're going to clean this face up. We'll clean that up at the and get the angle set right. Okay, and then we're going to take some measurements and we can start working that. Uh, we can start working that uh, diameter and get that in the right place because we want to end up right around that number. Okay. Um, so I hope that wasn't too uh, roundabout uh, for you, but measuring tapers is actually pretty tricky. Okay, and you have to you have to use careful setups and. Um, and you got to take a bunch of measurements and you got to do some math and uh, and uh, if you want to get a particular diameter and a particular angle okay okay so we still got our uh, our little um, Jacob's Arbor in there I'm going to show one more one more way that you can you can take a diameter at a particular distance from the end and um, um, for those of you that have a a gear tooth veneer, uh, you can actually do the, a very similar thing here where you can, yeah, mine's pretty stiff <laughs> mainly from lack of use okay so you can so what we're doing is we're and that's what a gear tooth veneer does is it, it measures a distance at a particular depth which is what we care about Okay, so now if I just read these numbers, okay, and I, I don't have my big magnifier on, so these are real hard to read here. Um, you, can't in, you can't read tenths off of this, okay, so you're only going to get down to about a mil, about a thousandth of an inch um, with, this, with this type of thing, okay, but, it'll, but you can, you know, if you have a reasonable distance, you can get a, a reasonably accurate measurement, okay. So I can take a measurement there, I can take that reading. And then what I can do is, God, this thing is really, really stiff, is I can move it up somewhere like that, okay? And the, the measurements really don't matter as long as they're separated by a little bit of space. Okay, so then there's another measurement. So I get that measurement, I do that same math that I showed, and, um, and da -da, you can get an angle, and... Uh, right off of this, you can actually work out the, the diameter at that end plane too, okay, with this one here, because you're actually measuring a, a known diameter there, not just a difference between two points. Okay, anyway, that's a gear tooth vernier, vernier. This is a Brown and Sharp uh, 580. Um, Starrett makes one of these. Uh, my friend Charlie gave me this one, and uh, so that I didn't return it to him, he put my name in it for me. Uh, he engraved that in there, so uh, this has some uh, sentimental value for me. So, but I don't use it very often. Every once in a while, you have to do something like that, measure a um, something at a particular distance, and uh, you can uh, you can do it with one of these.